What if I told you about a fighting game with smooth rollback netcode, cross-platform play between PC and all modern consoles, deep and varied mechanics across a diverse roster, character-specific tutorials, and a story mode that teaches you as you play? Sounds great, right? Cool. One small thing I forgot to mention, uh, it's made by bronies. To be taken somewhat seriously as a game and not just a joke, a My Little Pony inspired fighting game would need solid gameplay, but also needs to make its target audience of MLP fans comfortable and able to have fun, even if they haven't played a fighting game before. This is what drew me in. I am quite new to fighting games and have been trying lots of them out to see what their beginner experience is like. I heard that Them's Fighting Herds has a story mode that teaches the player as they play, instead of a traditional separate dry tutorial mode. This is an area that I feel many fighting games could improve on, giving the newcomer an exciting and fun first few hours to get comfortable with the controls and the basics before they start the cycle of getting their butt kicked and seeing gradual improvement against other humans. So I booted up the game and jumped into story mode. I immediately loved the pixel graphics between fights. The different settings are gorgeous. There's lots of humour, and while the story is quite short if you run straight through, it does invite replay and exploration through a set of collectibles in each level, some of which are quite tricky to find, requiring extra battles, simple puzzles, or platforming challenges. But how about that learning experience? I like that it teaches the player some mechanics through different gameplay experiences. You get a chance to practice some things out of the context of a fight against an NPC or a training dummy. The aforementioned platforming challenges are used to teach you movement options, sometimes combining climbing up a mountain while fighting off flying enemies. I later realised that these are pretty specific to Arizona, the character you use in this part of the story, and other characters have different movement options that wouldn't work in these challenges. That seems a bit odd, especially as the story doesn't teach the player how these different movement options that Arizona has might be used to her advantage in fights. I like platformers, but the core of that genre is movement that feels good, which it kind of doesn't here. A more engaging test of the player's movement is this snake boss, which includes fighting sections and requires the player to dash, run and jump to avoid poison projectiles and other attacks like a tail swipe. The bloody tail swipe. This attack almost made me rage quit the story mode. An exclamation mark flashes a warning, but if you don't react quickly enough, which I usually didn't, it knocks you down. Often, another swipe comes in just as you recover, knocking you down again with an incredibly tight window to jump and avoid the next whip of the tail. This was not the first time I had gotten stuck in the story mode. You don't recover all of your health between battles, and checkpoints and healing items are not that widespread. I started out on the third easiest difficulty and did find it very challenging at first. The lower difficulties give you a health buff, healing between rounds of boss fights, and easier enemy AI. For any fighting game beginners, I would recommend playing on the easiest difficulty for your first time through while you learn the game. The story mode has good replayability, so learning on the easiest setting and then playing again on a higher setting will give you a less frustrating experience. It is a shame that the game doesn't let you change difficulty within the story section or give the player many ways to dynamically make the game easier or more difficult for themselves. The RPG mode of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus lets the player upgrade weapons, meaning you can affect grind to make the game easier, or choose not to focus on upgrades and give yourself more of a challenge. But in Them's Fighting Hers, if you get stuck halfway through a level and want to make it easier for yourself, you will have to play the level through again from the beginning. That doesn't actually take too long once you've played it once and know where you're going, but imagine a brony who is playing this game as their first fighting game experience, they're going to be frustrated. After starting again on the easiest setting, I got back to the snake boss after about 20 minutes. At this point, I realised that the exclamation mark wasn't the only warning sign preceding a tail swipe. The snake itself visibly twitches, giving you much more time to react. Once I figured this out, the fight became almost trivial, and the difficult part wasn't really affected by the difficulty setting. Oh well. I applaud the developers for being more creative in making their story mode accessible than a lot of fighting games with much bigger budgets, but it feels like a work in progress. For one thing, the story mode ends abruptly with a to be continued. There are several more parts of the story planned but not yet implemented. This also cuts short the tutorial element of the story. Aside from Arizona's movement, it covers high and low blocking, super moves and meter, and the universal anti-air, but doesn't cover special moves or combos, two really important parts of this game. 
Yes, if you have a little bit of experience in this genre, you can figure that out quickly from the move list or a little bit of experimentation, but this might hamstring a noob. After playing through the story two and a half times, I realised the game does actually have a traditional tutorial too, which is a lot more thorough. It's pretty traditional, introducing a mechanic, its controls, and letting you practice it a couple of times. You can choose which character to use, and it will go through all their special moves and unique mechanics. I first went for Oleander, mainly because the little hand thing that comes out of her book reminds me of Gold Lewis, and it's just pretty cool. I realised she is quite a complicated character, with resources to juggle and even a puppet figure you can pull out by using two special bars. Them's Fighting Herds doesn't have a massive roster, but it has a good mix of characters with different mechanics and playstyles. Armed with my new tutorial gained knowledge, I jumped online to test out my Oleander skills. They were not particularly strong skills. I matched with a patient opponent who played several casual matches with me, crushing my weak Oleander. We both swapped characters a few times. The aforementioned tutorial would be a great way to get your head around a new character, but the controls are similar across the cast, so it's easy enough to jump in and figure out what you can do by experimenting. There's universal anti-airs, throws and launchers. There's a light, medium and heavy button with corresponding variants for the special moves. The biggest wild card is the fourth button, magic. This varies a lot between characters and its effect is not always obvious just from trying it. Regardless, I tried a couple of characters that looked cool to me and I just tried buttons out. After losing again and again, I eventually managed to win a match using Velvet, using her specials to hit the opponent at a variety of ranges. Admittedly, my opponent was on their third or fourth character and probably still in the process of figuring out their own moves, but it was still super satisfying to get a couple of wins. I found this match in the Pixel Lobby, a casual lobby where you can customise your character and find and spectate matches. Something I love here is that you can invite another player to go into training mode with you. You can practice your combos and defensive options on each other without the pressure of diminishing health bars. This kind of thing is great for beginners, especially given the excellent netcode and crossplay. You don't need a friend in your house or even in your country to play together and practice with. You can find someone in-game or on Discord and have a good experience even if they're on another console in another country. Features like this and the character specific parts of the tutorial make Them's Fighting Herds a good choice for beginners both when they first pick it up and for the road ahead of learning the intricacies of the game. The story mode doesn't quite live up to its promise in that regard for me, but it's still a fun addition and something a bit different to what you'll find in other games in the genre and an alternative single player option to the arcade mode that the game also includes. There's even more hidden content in the game, including the salt mines mode in the pixel lobbies. So even when you're not in the mood for the ranked grind, there's plenty to keep you coming back to them's fighting herds.